Okay, it's day 409 off the grid. Yes, and I know the light's a bit shitty in here. There's not much I can do about that. I might better move the light a little bit. We'll see, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. Today I'm spending some time getting the sound system ready for the Shannon Car Show, which will be on Sunday. So that's a few days' time. And I'm making sure all the equipment's working so it'll do a good job. And as part of the process, I discovered I had a bit of an issue with my beloved Lewis Legro 1970s 8-channel audio mixing desk made in New Zealand. And yeah, last year, some of the faders were starting to get a little bit on the worrying side in terms of scratchiness. Well, when I've tested it now, it got to the point where it was unusable, like... Like the whole thing had become microphonic, you tap it and you get nasty big cracks through the speakers and stuff and you couldn't guarantee to set the faders, the master faders it was, at the right place um, without some scratching or some hiss starting to happen. So I was contemplating what else I could use instead of this desk and all my other solutions, well I could do other solutions but they're just not as good as this. This has got... A lot of extra sends which I'm planning on using this year and stuff and I can EQ each channel on this and it's just got balanced inputs and it's just the proper thing to use really and so sort of scraping up a few other bits of gear lashed together to replicate the job of a mixing desk really didn't want to do it so I thought I'd have a go at fixing it well I pretty much tracked down the fault pretty quickly it was this fader here, the left hand fader, which was where most of the trouble was from. The right was a little bit dicey, but still kind of usable. But the left hand one has just got to the point where it was a shocker. Now, I know I might have some spare slider pots around here somewhere, but I'm not going to spend all day hunting around in my junk for them. It's a bit hot for that. And besides, yeah... Well, I might not find the right values anyway. Not that that matters. You can be near enough with these audio circuits. Uh, here's one I'd done years ago when I first acquired the disc. This was out of an old television set. And as you can see, it's actually shorter than the rest of them. But it works fine. It does the job. So I thought about fixing the gain by wiring some fixed resistors across the pots. Um, these pots actually act as rear stats. And they're actually... I think they're controlling negative feedback or, or something or the or the loop gain of an op amp because when they're set to zero ohms that's zero volume and they're yeah they've only wired with two terminals interesting so to set the gain i'd have to choose a fixed resistor of a particular value but that might not be very versatile so what i've come up with though and that's why i'm making this video is this and i'm pretty happy with this result i've got quite a few of these double ganged 50k logarithmic um, pots I bought cheap from Dick Smith when they were starting to go out of electronic components I think I paid a dollar each for them and I got heaps of them now I figured that yeah I'm, I'm, I'm changing the disc cosmetically by drilling a hole to mount this pot but it's such a small hole that if I ever go back to using faders I can just fill that hole in or I thought even better I might just leave the pot there and have it do something else um, but at the moment now this is the master gain control so i've ganged the left and right channels together and now this controls both simultaneously which for the most of the time that's what you want to do on a desk you know you hardly ever use master controls on a mixing desk to set any kind of balance it's normally that both push together or pull back together for you know master volume or fading or whatever so Having them ganged, I don't really see that as a major issue. And if I do need to set a balance, well, the power amp over there has got separate um, controls for the left and right inputs anyway, so I can always affect the balance on there. So for what I'm doing, that's no major hassle. In fact, it may make things easier. So I just thought I'd make a quick video of that. I know the light's not very good. I was going to try and... Oh, how's that? There we go. That looks a bit better. There's the pot. Here's what the general wiring looks like in a disc of this nature. As you can see, it's actually really, really neat. So I don't suspect there's a problem with any other item in there. It is integrated circuits, op amps. It's not, it's not a discrete disc, so it's not that old. I guess it kind of looks 
a bit older than it really is on the outside because well i don't know if it's had a hard life but it's it's you know it's been around for a long time and it's made in new zealand so it's almost homemade in a factory if you like so it may it may look a bit more vintage than what it really is but it's definitely um 70s probably late 70s possibly early 80s but i'm picking late 70s it's actually got a serial number on it it does have a good tone and of course this was the desk that the beltane april 5th 1995 rehearsal was recorded through and of course has had some use in Beltane over the years too quite recently and sort of like redos of some of those tracks and stuff I've incorporated this into the audio chain just to get that authentic vibe you know but it's also had most of its use in the last few years practically well last two years running I've used this to do the sound at the um, car show I did it the year before but I didn't have quite as big a setup I just used what they had there but this should do the job I'm hoping for a slightly bigger setup this year I mean I'm going to be playing vinyls for one thing if the record player goes so but I'm hoping to have a little bit more in the speaker department but we'll see how that works out but I'll make a video of that on the day at any rate so there we go that's enough for now I'm going to put this back together and continue testing the other components of the sound system but I just wanted to give you a look inside it well I got my record player hooked up really well and that was going awesomely but the problem with that was is it showed up a fault in the speaker cabinet now for the last couple of years I've used these speakers I've known there was a dodgy driver or two in these cabinets in fact this is why this one's marked with this bit of black tape I did this after the car show the year before I didn't do anything about it last year I just used it but this speaker gets a lot more distorted than the other side one does but when I hooked up this record player today I think the clarity of the vinyl just brought out that distortion really obnoxiously to me and I couldn't tolerate it so I thought yes it's finally time to tear this thing apart which wasn't easy all those screws came out of it I actually went to using the cordless drill as a screwdriver to make my life easier and that did help a lot but anyway this is what I've found there's four drivers in here and you know you look at these old speaker cabinets and you go oh that's an old rough looking piece of crap but then you open them up because that hasn't been exposed to the world all these years and you go wow this is really well made look at these nice drivers that are in there New Zealand made plessy drivers you know and they do when they're working sound really good but unfortunately two of them are dicey I wonder if I can demonstrate this one here's a dicey one and this is how you tell if a speaker that isn't actually blowing is, is fucked listen can you hear that hope the wind's not wiping it out that scraping noise and this one here by comparison is a perfectly good one see no scraping So what's happened is this has had too much bass put in it at some point and the voice coil has come all the way forwards, pulled out of the end of the magnet and then corrupted itself on the way back in. And this is what destroys more speakers than a total burnout. Although I have seen a speaker catch fire on more than one occasion in the PA business. But most of the time speakers are ruined by driving them too hard and, and this basically happens. And it does stuff the speaker you can fix it but you have to recone the speaker now these might be worth doing they look like some nice drivers there however I don't have the time for that today so I'm at a bit of a miss what to do because I don't actually have just one dodgy driver this one here is also not as bad but it's also doing it I thought if I had just had one dicey driver I would just cut it out and replace it with a resistor so that it, the other good driver is still taking about the same amount of power but with two down um, I'd end up just driving this speaker box too hard and um, blowing the other two I reckon so I'm going to come up with a substitute box I think 
I don't really have any 8 inch drivers lying around that I can quickly just install in here and keep it going so that'll be a fix another time job I think but you know I'm glad I checked and I have come up with a solution so you'll see that when I film the setup on Sunday but I just thought I'd show you inside one of these speaker cabinets you know they're actually quite nice okay and here is the conclusion of day 409 off the grid I'm actually filming it the day after because by the time I finished with this lot it was well after 9 at night and I've had enough of the day so besides the work on the sound system which was quite involved and it in the end included um, hunting out another amplifier um, I still had some time to do some battery stuff and these are the new batteries that I've just bought I bought three of these the a Zenith um, AGM battery, 80 amp hours, the second hand of course, um, I got three of them for $130 so I was pretty happy with that and they are installed in the 24 volt system in Shed A as you can see they have replaced the two batteries that were originally here, the slightly smaller ones, the same as these ones here um, because those ones I deem to be the weakest battery so I've removed them and they'll probably end up in the battery fridge but I put these in last night and they have really given a boost to the fridge circuit and hopefully I won't be so worried about it now when we don't get the sun and hopefully when the weather does start packing in it'll require less generator runs to keep the system going because a lot of the time last year to be honest uh, the main inspiration for cranking up the Jenny was to keep the freezer batteries topped up so yeah put them in um, what can I say about that uh, well you know when you, when you start changing batteries and you start changing different size or you know batteries or they've got different um, terminal types and stuff sometimes it gets a bit tricky um, Well, I've tidied up the, these terminals here. Now, the original stud bolt wouldn't have been long enough to tap down on all these lugs that go onto this battery, so I ended up making a new one, the same diameter bolt. It was quite a long bolt. I just cut it down until it was the right length. So that bolt won't go fully in and tighten when the battery's unloaded with terminals, but when you've got all these on it, it tightens down perfectly. So, yeah, I had to do that. That was one little issue. The other issue was this lead here used to be a red one. This is the lead which links the two 12 volt halves of this bank. I had to get this one because it was a bit longer. Because these batteries here, the terminals are on the outside and the wire had to come across about another 10 centimeters. I also swapped the one that was here. Originally we had that one there and it went on to the post of the other small battery but these don't have posts obviously so I put this wire in I had to ream out the lug there to fit this bolt and it nearly took all the meat off it but I think there's just enough so that was pretty much it really that was all the real alterations I had to do to bring it all together I had these batteries all charged up after running them for a quick test with my bulb load and I put some charge onto these batteries from the other shed through the CTEC here just to make sure they're all fully topped off so when I united them they were pretty close in voltage. I was really hoping today was going to be sunny and initially it wasn't, it was actually raining this morning but if you look now out there it's actually beautiful and sunny so we're getting a good charge into these batteries, they're up at 26.3 of course they were also running the freezer all day so everything's going and of course oh while I'm here here's the um, power supply for the the boost voltage battery for the real-time diversion controller so the power supply is just neatly mounted here on the wall using an old basically FPOS type card for mounting I just super glued it on the back of this quick and dirty but it's pretty solid it's one of those times when super glue really worked and that just feeds down to the battery down here which is the bloody minded battery which I've already told the story about that so I won't go into that again and another wire takes it over here and it just connects into the, where it needs to on the real-time diversion controller 
and that's pretty much that so yeah that's day 409 complete bit of PA's but sound systems I mean you know PA sound system same thing and a bit of batteries eh day 409 off the grid